Hello and welcome to our session where we'll be talking about uh, how we leverage Apache Fling to power uh, OLAP or real-time analytics at Uber. So before we begin, a bit a note about the speakers. Uh, I'm Chinmay Soman. Uh, up until recently, I was leading the streaming team at Uber, responsible for building platforms around Kafka, Flink, and Pino. And besides this, I'm also an active uh, contributor on Apache Pino and part of open source projects such as Apache Samza and Athena X. And Girish? Hi, I'm uh, Girish Baliga. Uh, I'm an engineering manager in the data and front team at Uber. I currently manage Flink, Pino, and Presto teams. Uh, and in the open source, uh, I am a board member of the Presto Linux Foundation. Awesome. Thanks, Girish. So in this talk, I'll give you an overview of the real-time analytics ecosystem at Uber and talk about Apache Pino, which is the primary OLAP store that we use. We'll discuss the different ingestion challenges that we face and how Fling comes to the rescue. And then later half, Girish will give you an overview of the solution that we built using Flink and then discuss the further challenges that uh, we have faced in our journey. So let's just jump right in. For those who are not aware, uh, OLAP, or which stands for Online Analytical Processing, is a way of, uh, it typically refers to analytical queries being performed on fresh data in a low latency manner. What that means is both the query latency and ingestion latency has to be low, uh, which is different from a traditional warehouse. So a good example is the Uber Eats Restaurant Manager tool. This is, some, this is a tool given to all the restaurant owners across the globe for slicing and dicing their data, Uber Eats data in real time. So this allows them to analyze things like uh, supply demand, sales metrics, and service quality, and so on. Another good example is this dashboard used by Uber Freight for monitoring the status of the shipments, uh, marketplace health, uh, in, again, in, in real time and offline manner. Although these dashboards look pretty simple, it, it, it's pretty complicated to, to, build, to build them. So let's take a quick look at the end-to-end -end data flow for building such use cases. So on the left, you, you have all the applications and microservices running in Uber's data centers. And they oftentimes use some sort of OLTP store to store the transaction data. In this case, both the application logs and the database change log is being shipped or emitted into, Kaf into Kafka for further dispersal. And Kafka becomes the glue that connects everything together. Uh, it's important to note that most of the important Kafka topics are also being persisted into HDFS and Hive for long-term storage. Uh, at this point, Apache Pino, which is our OLAP store, is able to consume from both Kafka and Hive and make the data available for query. So data, we, we provide two ways to query the data. One is through the uh, Pino SQL, which, uh, which is shipped out of the box from Pino. Uh, and then the Presto integration, which we added recently. Um, and, and then most of the use cases will, will be powered using Presto in the near future. So using this setup, you can build all kinds of different analytical use cases, whether it's dashboards or doing analytical queries through RPC, or even for data scientists trying to do uh, real-time visual exploration. So let's take a quick detour into Apache Pino to understand, to get familiar with its inner workings. Apache Pino is a distributed columnar OLAP store, which originated in LinkedIn. And it adopts the classic Lambda architecture. So as you, can, as you saw before, uh, it's able to consume from both Kafka and, and Hive and present a unified view to the users. So it's important to note that both these flows uh, are distinct. Uh, and on the real-time side, it consumes event by event. And on the Hive side, it actually generates segments in bulk. It, at Uber, we, we adopted Pino primarily because of its ability to serve high throughput queries in a very low latency manner at millisecond granularity. So here's a quick view of the overall architecture of Pino. At the bottom, you have the data sources, both the real-time and offline. On the top right, we have the controller, which is really the brains of the operation. And the controller uses Apache Helix to do things like segment assignment or instance allocation, 
or control how the segments are replicated and so on. On the left, you have the data plane, which consists of brokers and servers. So servers organize the incoming data into columnar segments and are also responsible for building indexes on per, per uh, column. And, and the broker does a distributed scatter gather across these servers every time it receives a query. Today, we have around 200 plus tables in production, which account for multiple terabytes of data managed by Pino. At any given point of time, we're doing multiple thousands of queries per second at a P99 of 100 millisecond query latency, which is quite impressive. Okay, so back to regular programming. Uh, in spite of all these features that we saw that Pino has to offer, there are many cases where uh, Pino alone is not sufficient. For example, if you're dealing with highly nested data or unstructured data, if you want to do joins across streams and tables, or even do some pre-aggregation before you make the data available for querying, uh, we, we need to rely on an additional component. And there enters Apache Flink. With Flink and Pino, this is a powerful combination that helps us to solve a lot of critical use cases. So now on to Girish to explain further on how this works. Thanks a lot, Tinmay. So uh, as Tinmay mentioned, uh, the primary mechanism we're using to solve all of those ingestion challenges is uh, powered by Apache Flink. Uh, but it's uh, based on a concept that most of you are already aware of, uh, SQL. So the idea is uh, we provide an abstraction layer for our users where they can specify the data transformations uh, encompassing most of the challenges that Chinmay talked about as a, S a SQL query, which uh, they can enter through a UI like you see here. Um, so Athena X is a framework that we have built at Uber and previously presented at Flink Forward that allows users to enter SQL transforms like this. Uh, and uh, productionizing uh, it very easily. So as you can see in this uh, uh, layout, uh, what happens is the SQL that is entered by the users uh, is transformed by an Athena X compiler into a production Flink job. Uh, the production Flink job, uh, interestingly, takes in an input uh, a stream of data from Kafka, applies the transformation specified by the user, and generates an output stream of Kafka events, uh, which is then directly ingested by Pino. Uh, so essentially what users are doing is using Flink to specify uh, an uh, online streaming transformation of data from an input Kafka stream to an output Kafka stream. Uh, of course, uh, when you try to do something like this, uh, you will run into a lot of other challenges. Um, so here are three main challenges that uh, I'll be covering in this talk. Uh, so the first challenge is uh, when to do pre-processing versus uh, when, uh, what computations to do at query time. Uh, the second is how to do backfills for exceptional cases. And the third is how to handle uh, failures using uh, an active active type architecture. So for the first challenge, let's take a deeper look at how uh, the data flows through our system. So we could have data from uh, different input sources, so direct Kafka streams, uh, OLTP stores, and microservices. And often uh, our users want to provide some combination of this data, typically through a join. And they also want to do some pre-processing. So either they want to compute some aggregates or they want to compute some uh, session concepts, which they can do through their Flink job. And then this data is then ingested into Pino. So once the data is in Pino, uh, users can query it through a Presto interface as Chinmay mentioned earlier. Uh, so the main challenge here is that we have two SQL uh, interfaces for our users, one for uh, specifying transformations at ingest time, and the second is for specifying the queries that they want to uh, compute the results on and then display it as a dashboard or power uh, other business processes. So what goes in the pre-computation segment and what goes in uh, the online on the fly uh, query specification. So this is an interesting challenge and we are seeing uh, different use cases have different uh, balances of this. And we're trying to formulate some common principles on how to approach this problem. So we'll have more to share hopefully uh, soon. 
So the second challenge uh, that we face is uh, how to do backfills. Uh, as Chinmay mentioned, Pino is interesting. Uh, so Pino has this Lambda architecture mode uh, where they have real-time tables and offline tables. And both of these uh, different kind of tables have different uh, input formats and different uh, requirements for ingestion. So for the real-time pipeline, so we can have data streaming in through Kafka, transformed by Flink, and again, output as another Kafka stream, which is then directly ingested into Pino. However, for the offline segments, uh, we need to compute these Pino segments uh, by performing transformations on an offline dump of the Kafka stream in HDFS. So in essence, uh, we need to have two pipelines uh, where we are basically either taking the production data into real-time tables or offline data through Hive SQL. Um, so people use these for solving a variety of problems. Uh, a couple of them we mentioned here. One is uh, maybe the upstream data changes, or maybe they want to bootstrap a new table with historical data. But regardless of the use case, uh, this is a fundamental challenge that users have to face. So how do we solve this? Uh, the first proposal that we have uh, previously presented at Flink Forward is Kava Plus. So uh, Roshan has a lot of nice talks around this. We have linked to one such. Um, the basic idea here is uh, you take the same uh, Flink pipeline, uh, which is specified through CalSite SQL, uh, that is running in production on your streaming data. And then you apply it on the data dump available in HDFS to perform the same transforms and generate your Pino offline data. And then you have a post-processing step which will generate the segments and load it into Pino. Uh, so the core idea again is to reuse the same pipeline that is generated through uh, the same CalSite SQL. The second approach is to have a common SQL, uh, but that can run over different engines. So this is uh, somewhat of a new idea. Uh, where basically we are uh, looking at some sort of a common SQL specification across uh, streaming batch and other offerings at Uber. And perhaps we could have that common SQL be uh, translated into both a Flink pipeline for streaming and a Spark or a similar engine for offline computation. Uh, so the contrast here is with the SQL versus using the same pipeline. Uh, so there are some interesting trade-offs and we'll have more to say uh, in, in the future. The third challenge uh, that uh, we are facing is how to provide reliable uh, service on top of Apache Pino for real-time analytics use cases. Um, so in, in this diagram, we can see an approach to addressing this uh, by getting cross-region re uh, uh, reliability and redundancy. So what we do here is we have uh, uh, Kafka streams uh, that uh, replicate the data across multiple regions and perform a bidirectional aggregation to reconcile and provide a uniform stream of data for uh, each region. So essentially, we are solving uh, the, the data reconciliation problem in the Kafka layer itself. So what this allows us to do is then have the downstream pipelines just be replicas in different regions, right? So you have the same uh, Flink pipeline running in multiple data centers. Uh, and you have Pinot clusters, which are ingesting from these uh, pipelines independently. And they should all have the same data because they're all starting with the same source. Uh, and uh, no story on reliability is complete without uh, a backfill, uh, where you want to deal with exceptional situations like failures and data loss. And the way we do that is by uh, having a bi-directional aggregation and reconciliation strategy on the data that is dumped from Kafka into HDFS. So what we then do is we take the uh, data on HDFS and then we just replay it again on Kafka streams and uh, follow the double compute pipelines into uh, through Flink into the Pinot deployments. So uh, we have covered some uh, interesting challenges that uh, we have uh, addressed so far. There are obviously many more challenges that we are facing uh, in our uh, overall OLAP and real-time analytics settings. Uh, hopefully, this gives, gave you an interesting preview. Uh, and if you have any questions about how uh, we're doing any of this in more detail or uh, any other uh, questions about our overall uh, architecture, uh, we're happy to take this online in the talk. Thank you.
Thanks a lot.